welcome back. Let's chat episode three. Before I officially start the chat, I want to announce that I am at 100 views in general on my channel. Big momentous occasion. I like to thank everyone for their support. And I'd also like to announce that for this episode of Let's Chat, I will have a special guest. This isn't the full group Let's Chat. That'll uh, be happening a little later. I still have to get those things around. But today, for my special guest, I have Tito. Hello, everybody. And he will also be returning potentially for other various things. But as of right now, welcome to Let's Chat. Um, I figured today we could take a little bit of time to go back to talking about current events because nothing's really going on in video games. So, but one of the uh, recent events I want to talk out here that talk about ugh, here that happened lately is um, the shit in the Middle East. Uh, the Middle East is getting crazy, and a lot of people are kind of acknowledging that shit there is going crazy. Uh, recently, the United States actually announced that they might be putting boots on the ground, and shit's getting pretty crazy. Um, Tito, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel about our situation in the Middle East? Well, with the Middle East, you have to think about it. Like, how many years has it been since we first went over there? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the main thing about that is fighting for oil. Yes. Because that's the main thing and only reason why we go over there. Yeah. Everything else is, like, not much of a threat. Mm -hmm. It's just we need the oil. And it's been like that, and it's for negotiation reasons. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's like... It's kind of pointless to have so many people over there just for this. Considering, like, just because we have those over there, those irrationalists on mm -hmm. their side of the thing are killing our people. Yeah. But in return, we're also killing their people. Mm -hmm. Over what, though? The main reason the violence, as far as I've learned, has been going on over there is because of Hamas. Uh, pretty much what happens is, is Al-Qaeda is over there, as you know, but then there's also this radicalist group called ISIS, who is which is ran by Hamas. ISIS is actually considered a hate group. They actually believe the whole world should be united under Islamicism, which everyone does have a right to believe in their own religion. But the way they see it as is pretty much, if you haven't heard, if anyone Christian is living in Iraq under where ISIS is controlling, you have, I think it is three choices, imprisonment, death, or taxes. And pretty much if you don't conform to the first two pretty much if you don't get imprisoned or leave or if you don't pay the taxes they just gun you down right there but even with that i've heard of things of them telling people fine then you can pay your taxes and then in the middle of the night people dying because well you know isis is a hate group they you know they don't care if you're going to pay taxes they don't want your taxes they just you know they're only out to get their one thing which, that's another reason the violence over there is escalating, too, is because, like, it, it started with Hamas and Palestine. The What happened with Palestine is the fact that there are, there are innocent people in Palestine, but what happened is, is Hamas kind of worked his way up into pretty much being kind of a big guy over there. Well, he kind of worked his way up into building up a military and, you know, attacking Israel. And when he attacked Israel, you know, he suddenly started saying, hey let's call off our violence and all these fake peace treaties. Well, every time they call the peace treaty, suddenly Hamas starts shooting rockets at Israel, which, thank God, Israel does have a defense system against rockets. But it's, you know, something like that is escalating the violence over there. And then um, Hamas, is I believe, is considered to be working with ISIS, which ISIS are the guys who are in Iraq. And they're the guys in Iraq who are doing, you know, all of the you know, very bad stuff happening over there with the, you know, executions of people who are Christian, this, that, and the other, and I think, um, I think, um, because in a while back, they had, uh, I think it was in Nigeria, a bunch of schoolgirls were kidnapped, they believe that it might be ISIS being responsible for that, it was either ISIS or Al-Qaeda, but either way, I thought it was pretty strange how that happened, and then here, weeks later, now we have ISIS, you know, running through Iraq, kind of laying waste to things. But this also comes with the fact that Iraq is also changing its government around this time. And the weird thing about that was, was the, the government that used, the, the people who, were, who used to be majorly running, running the government in Iraq were friends with Russia. And Russia also recently just shot down um, Malaysian Airlines Flight 17. 
which there was a lot of controversy about that. Uh, they say it was mil uh, some rogue militant group that was in Ukraine, because it happened in Ukraine. It was said it was some rogue group militant units in Ukraine were being fueled by the Russian government, this, that, and the other. There's a lot of controversy about that. Um, we ended up finding out that it was because of the Russian government, and then now a lot of governments are cutting off the Russians, and then crazy things like that are happening, and it's all nuts. It's all crazy. People say we are on the war, the verge of a, you know, a World War III, which I wouldn't say we're on the verge of a World War III because the situations have seemed to have been controlled in certain areas, but in other areas they're not. Like, Iraq is still pretty heavily, you know, we are planning on putting boots there, so obviously things there are, you know, going pretty south. But, you know, I don't think we're on the verge of, you know, f all, all on World War Three. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we're on the verge of World War Three? Um, I think it's been happening since forever ago. It's just that we haven't set it off to full scale yet. Because mm -hmm. think about it, we have many situations arise here and there, but nothing like a full scale war like it, World War One or World War Two. Mm -hmm. So, it's slowly building up, but it also has a chance to slowly just all reverse itself as well but other than that it's just a matter of which events can cause what kind of reactions which could lead to other events mm -hmm. so it's all about the waiting game and seeing how everything plays out mm -hmm. and what the governments on each side decide to react to whether it's properly or irrationally mm -hmm. so it, technically it's all in the government's hand right now whether they want to mm -hmm go full scale or not mm -hmm. I see something else I want to ask you real quick this is something that's not, that dawned on my mind recently with the way weapons have been made from World War 2 slash the Cold War to now we now um, countries well countries now contain bombs that can reach the other side of the planet you know and these can be carrying nuclear warheads and I just want to ask you, if you think a World War III breaks out, do you think it will be ultimately devastating? Not necessarily. Because you always have those counteractive measurements in place mm -hmm. that can counteract a warhead. Like, it could be flying over, then you can send something else mm -hmm. to interact with it land on top of their warhead and then probably just land in the middle of the ocean nowhere causing no damage at the same time you could just immediately send one to collide with it mm -hmm. in an area where it won't harm anyone to cause little harm mm -hmm. and or you have your rogue agents that go in there to disarm the bombs or take over the plants where the warheads are located and stuff. but the problem with that is those are usually guarded or they have a countermeasure of their own for that yeah so it all depends is like whether they sign a treaty beforehand to not use warheads or something mm -hmm. or they just go all out and see what's left over after everything okay alrighty I see your reasoning with that let me, but let me pose to you another question um, because of the potentiality of the situation we could potentially end up going to war with terrorist again with you know the afghan war was a war with you know the war on terror this that and the other you know with al-qaeda and stuff like that we'll be we'll be potentially going to war with terrorist which there is a fear that terrorists have because a few years ago there was an announcement that iraq was working on nuclear weapons and now you know with the iraq government kind of in a you know kind of being all you know swashbuckled around you know, do you believe that there is a fear that if terrorists are involved in this war, that they will just start launching, launching nu nuclear weapons at innocent areas and begin just kind of killing thousands of innocent people? Um, no, because if they do that, they're going to suffer repercussions, not only from the places that they attacked, but their surrounding places. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that they did, sure, they would have accomplished a little bit, but in the end, they would 
be more than likely wiped out. Mm -hmm. So what would be the point of doing that just to get wiped out in the end? You would, they would have to wait for something bigger to come along, mm -hmm. where they can easily attack each one and not worry uh, about getting obliterated completely so quickly by their surrounding peoples or whoever. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's not a threat now, but it could be later down the road once they become a way more bigger organization than they already are. Okay, alrighty. Alrighty, I like your input on that. You're definitely very wise in these subjects. But, it's sadly enough, it is time to move on to the next topic. Our next topic, which I feel is kind of appropriate, is... Uh, lately, something happened here near Indiana. It happened in Louisville, Kentucky. as surrounding the movie The Purge, and a bunch of people in Louisville, Kentucky tried to stage a quote-unquote purge. What ended up happening was a few little riots, a dildo got thrown at a police car, and a cat got raped. But this shows that there might be, you know, a weakness of government in certain areas of the United States. This, to me, shows that certain areas of the United States kind of are more than willing to just kind of throw whatever, you know, little juvenile fun they have, you know, they're willing to use whatever juvenility they have and just throw it at the government and think it's a joke. And especially since, if you watch the movie The Purge, what The Purge is, is it's supposed to be uh, 24 hours in which all crime is legal, including murder, this, that, and the other. Well, the fact that people were trying to stage something like this is a little worrying. And the fact that people actually started kind of, tr like, throwing riots in kind of a, not a full-on purge, but just kind of started doing like a prepubescenary pre kind of purge state also kind of is a little alarming because, I mean, if you think about it, the fact that these people went for, you know, went straight for riots shows that if you would have had someone who was maybe not mentally stable, maybe someone who was easily influenced, I mean, if you were to get a big enough group of people, you could end up using those group of people to influence other people into doing these things. And some people aren't necessarily, you know... They don't necessarily have their head fully on their shoulders. They might be influenced to believe things like this, you know, are, you know, positive. You could potentially get people who don't riot and actually go out and try to murder people and maim them and do all these horrible things. This is very alarming, and I can understand that, you know, it's a very odd situation, especially since... Uh, something like this has happened, where people have tried to enact something from a movie like this. Uh, a couple of years back, when Fight Club came out, a man tried to enact his own Project Mayhem, but was promptly caught by police. You know, and a lot of people are like, oh yeah, well they were caught by the police, but this shows an alarming situation, though. People, the fact that people are trying to enact things from these movies makes me wonder, are people sort of... Are people sort of becoming too attached to, like, things in the media, like cinema, you know, and are people getting too attached to these, and are people trying to enact these maybe because they believe that, maybe, you know, they believe the government really is kind of, you know, because with all the things that are going on lately, like, the, the possibility of war and the fact that our economy might be taking another hit... I mean, this might drive people into enacting these events. Like, people might be doing this because maybe they believe the government's already going downhill, and maybe, you know, why not? That could be a potentiality. We never know. Um, an official statement from the guy who started the whole quote-unquote prank said it was just supposed to be a joke. Well, jokes don't lead to riots. Jokes don't lead to, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of property damage and things like that. Things like, a joke doesn't lead to a raped cat. And I'm not joking about that. You know, and it's like, what the fuck is wrong with people? And obviously, this had to start with an entire group of people who thought this was going to be funny or thought they were either going to get away with this. Basically, it started with a group of idiots. And things like this are really stupid. Because whether or not it's a sign of weakness, it's a sign of people maybe don't trust the government, you know? Who knows? But to me, it just sounds like an idiot thought he was being funny 
and then things went way too far, and then he didn't want to pay for the consequences of his actions. But, you know, who knows? Tito, what are your thoughts on all this stuff? Uh, well, the way I see it is people get easily influenced on things like this because the way movies, shows, and music work is it's supposed to help us escape the current reality that we're in and enter into a different world. Some people get too caught up in this world and they want to stay in that one. So when they come back, they want to do whatever they can to make themselves feel back in their own different world. And obviously with these people, the purge is their little joke slash let's see what happens. But also with this thing, I think if it keeps going on city to city, I mean, eventually, all these people are going to get caught. And they were the dumb, dumb enough to get caught. So then we would have fewer idiots left out there. And the smarter ones will still be out on the street making things a bit better without the idiots influencing other idiots. Because if, you, if they don't all get caught at one point, then it's just going to spread and spread. And eventually, something bad is going to come out of it. Right now, it's just really small scale. Nothing to be too worried about. Mm -hmm. But what happens when it goes full scale and then people start bringing in weapons and stuff? Mm -hmm. And start actually mugging people mm -hmm. and all this other shit? Then we have a problem. Yeah. And what are they going to say for their cause of it? Oh, mm -hmm. it was a good idea. It helps out. Mm -hmm. It's like a relief. It's like, No. You got influenced by a fictional movie. Mm -hmm. If you easily get influenced by fictional stuff, what is going to stop you from doing something way more idiotic later down the road? Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's like, don't get influenced by fictional things like that mm -hmm. unless it's, you know, something to improve yourself or help out yourself in your community and not hinder other people. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's just my thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Another thing this addresses is because um, when the whole Louisville, Kentucky thing happened, uh, SWAT teams were there to respond, and SWAT teams were there to protect people. But from pictures I had seen, there were actually complete city blocks that were completely vacant. And to me, that's pretty odd, because if the SWAT says they have things under control you think there would be police on nearly every street corner. And to me, that's kind of odd. Because, you know, why wouldn't you have police on every street corner? To me, that's just kind of weird. And it's, I know, you know, maybe they don't have the budget or maybe they don't have the manpower, which is true. And I can understand that. But another thing, too, is when, you know, pictures are being frequently shown of these things and most of them are vacant areas that are obviously open to you know miscreants it's like what the hell now obviously you know like i said the police maybe don't have the money or the manpower but still you know and i can understand where they were writing you'd obviously need you know police officers this that and the other but i just think it's a little odd too that maybe you know the, the, the police presence was kind of nah wasn't really around in areas that maybe it kind of should have I mean, I understand you need police for a rioting area, but from what I heard, there weren't really that many people involved. There wasn't a large amount of people involved. And even with that, you know, it still kind of, to me, feels like, even though these kids proposed that it was a joke and this, that, and the other, I still feel as if the situation wasn't necessarily handled as well as it should have. I mean, I can understand, you know, kids are young and they're crazy and whatever but still when kids kids or anyone take a joke this far the police you know they got to be ready you know i understand they have the swat team but still you know when all of the police are occupied up in one area that leaves a lot of other areas open and you know and there wasn't a lot of media coverage um as far as i was i was i was heard and told the state of kentucky didn't want anyone covering it because they didn't want anyone freaking out because they didn't want anyone to think the situation was bigger than what it was, which it was a fairly small situation. You know, there wasn't really 
There wasn't anyone murdered. There wasn't anyone maimed. You know, this, that, and the other. So everyone's okay. But still, the fact that they also didn't want media coverage, even a little bit, to at least allow people to have an ease of mind, still kind of bothers me also. How do you feel about that? Well, the way that you just mentioned the whole entire media coverage thing, mm. like I said earlier, if they do that, then other people are going to see it, and they're going to be like, oh, you know, that seems like a great idea. Let's have our own to scare people, and then maybe more people will reenact it, and then eventually it will lead to something else. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with media. When it covers things like this, if it allows it, mm -hmm. people get in, into their minds like, oh, if you do something like this, it'll get you coverage, and if we get coverage, we'll get noticed, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's best to keep it as under wraps as you can or fully control the situation. And then along with the whole entire thing of how some city, how some blocks were vacant, mm -hmm. maybe those blocks didn't need people because the the people were walking around in groups, you know. So they just needed to send a few to the groups that we're at, and then other ones could just be patrolling around, making sure everywhere else is under control. But would a group like that really require a SWAT team, though? I don't think so. I think just a few officers armed with a few tasers would be able, you know, to control the situation. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I get what you're saying there. I definitely understand where you're coming from, and I agree with you on on a majority of those points. Um, another thing I want to bring up to this, though, is definitely the argument of psychological health. Someone who does this obviously must not psychologically be fully there in the head. Obviously, if someone obviously believes that this is a good thing, obviously either they're troubled or they're psychologically sick some way in the head. And for most of those instances, they just, you know... Either they'll ignore it and throw them away in, in a sane asylum for years and they'll never really be treated, or they'll just kind of throw them in a max, maximum security prison where, you know, they'll most likely just rot with no help and further their insanity instead of actually maybe getting some help or instead of actually, you know, trying to understand why these people are sick in the head, you know. And when usually when that happens to people, we'll never know. Like, there are people in history who have done things, and they've done pretty heinous things, but their reasoning is completely erratic. You know, they're talking about, God told me to do it, and I did it because of this reason, and the reason is, like, I did it because I wanted Mom to love me, and it's usually a sign of psychological health. Now, I do understand. People will say shit to get out of the death sentence or life in prison. I do understand that. But for the people who legitimately need help, you know, on occasion, they're just completely ignored by the state because the state says it's just another crazy person. Tito, do you believe it is fair to kind of generalize people who have psychological conditions like this in this way? Or do you believe that they deserve a bit of a fairer trial and treatment? Well, the people that actually do have mm -hmm. psychological health problems should be able to prove that they have them. Mm -hmm. Like, at least one record saying that they've, you know, got a checkup to, for their problems. Mm -hmm. But the people who say it that have no recorded instances of ever having a problem, mm -hmm. that's where you have to put deeper thought into their penalties and trials. Mm -hmm. Because what if they do, but what if they're just saying it so they can get out of it? Mm -hmm. But then you have those people that were just pressured into doing it but didn't want to. Mm -hmm. And those kind of get an unfair trial because one they don't have any psychological problems mm -hmm. and they were pressured into doing it mm -hmm. but also you have to think they still did it mm -hmm. they could have easily said no mm -hmm. but they went along with it yeah so pretty, everyone should be uh, going through the same trial mm -hmm. but some of those should be able to provide proof of their mental states and stuff like that Yes. And if you can't, then continue the trial mm -hmm. the way you would. But if you have your proof, then go off of that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's like, it's either you don't have a problem, you're peer pressured, or you do. Yeah. 
And that's the only way to look through it. Hmm. In some states, they have an instance, well, okay, well, in all states, they have a thing that says that to defend under criminal insanity or insanity or psychoticness of any way, you have to actually go through very rigorous psychological test to go at that defense. And they actually put you through test and most of the time to to plead that you have a psychological insanity, you have to have been diagnosed with some kind of disorder. And in some states, the there's a way around that because I think there is no state that will allow you to use a lie detector for any reason. Like you can't say, I'd like to lie detector him to prove he's lying or to prove his statements are false. There are states that won't do that because for some reason courts won't legally order it, which is ridiculous. And that's how a lot of people get around it. And a lot, a lot of other way it was a lot of other people get around it is that um, if you say you're crazy and you've never been once proven to have a psychological issue ever, usually to prove someone is psychologically unstable, unless they have medical records, you have to have witness statements, and your witness statements have to be really compelling. And usually it can't... Usually they'll take family witness statements, but because of how they'll look at how the trial's going on, they'll have to usually decide. And there's also a thing called the precedents. They have to base trials on precedent trials, meaning that if someone with a supposed psychological disorder commits an act that someone else with the same or disorder committed, they have to be tried in that way. Because it's, you know, it's how judicial law works. Which, in essence, in some ways, is still kind of screwed up. But it's the world we live in, and the world's still a relatively good place well here. I understand it's not perfect everywhere in the world. And that is awful, but, you know, it's, it's the world we live in. You know, it's called harsh reality. You know, we all have to deal with it. But, yeah. Alrighty, a few ending statements here. We are nearing a half an hour. A little bit longer than what the usual one is. But, hey, you know, you get to hear me talk a little more, so why not? Um, I'd like to thank you, Tito, for coming on to this Let's Chat. Like, I will probably have you on a few more, so. Yeah. It was a pleasure being here. It's always a pleasure to view around, sweetheart. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the next one. Um, 100 overall views, huzzah, and all that bullshit. You guys stay lovely, and I'll see you in a video that's not porno. Bye!